initialize sequence. Yo, what up? This is Prozac. This is Shaq's too dope from his St. Cloud Posse. Yo, uh, yeah, this is Brief. Yo, this be the one them called Tech Nine. What's up? This is Mad Child. This is your boy Spider Man, aka Brother Lynch. Huh? Jared from Head PE. And Yo, what up? This is Hop. My name is Recognized. Raw Real C. This is Boondock. Yo, this Blaze You Down, homie. Welcome to the Underground, Australia's home of underground music. We are back at it for another edition of the Underground, and it is Ned joined by Nims, the real JSL Herbert, and special guest this week to talk a little bit of NBL Finals. It's Johnny Fitz. Fellas, how are we all? Yeah, doing good, man. It's good to have the gang all here, Fitzy. Fits on my left and uh, Nimsy on the phone, of course. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we start off with the hard questions like, what do you do? This hand? Right? This hand? Uh, not right. We're off to a good start, aren't we? Gotta <laughs> love it, gotta love it. Now it is great to be back, boys, and we've got a lot to talk about in a very short space of time to do it. We've got half an hour up our sleeves. Before we jump into it, I do want to say Jared from Head PE is on this edition. Get it out of the way quick because halfway through last week so I'm like oh by the way Howard Jones is up shortly but Jared Head PE they're heading our way this week and I caught up with him so we'll listen to that a little bit later on but we've got a bunch of sport to talk about Herbs <laughs> he was built in a factory you take a look at the guy we need to put this up on the Facebook page no. man he is a linebacker for the Raiders in at the making Nim it is like 8 o'clock in the morning here man he's wearing his sunglasses inside a Batman t-shirt I've got to have the signature look man come on it's a radio it's podcast, though. It's <laughs> like radio, but anyway, the thing that I love about Herbs is normally when you get him up early and his brain quite doesn't function all right, he normally throws in the old excuse of, I haven't had my coffee! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't use that because it's in my hand as we speak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I'm just like, okay, so now you've filled me in, Herbs, because remember, I can't see you over the phone here. So I'm just like, geez, we've got a fair while and he hasn't dropped the coffee bomb yet. But oh, well, that's all good, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost two minutes in and he hasn't even he, told anyone to... He's quite. He's actually quite sprightly this morning. Well, he has to be on his best there. behaviour, guys. And I was going to say this, Nim, you may not know this, but Herbs and Fitz knew each other in another life. And I want you guys to tell me about this. This is probably the reason Herbs is on his best behaviour because oh. he is somewhat of a role model to Fitz he is. In, in many ways. I think you need a new role model, man. <laughs> That's why I moved on pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell us about it, guys. What, what he needs to be is a know your role model. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess he could say it was a previous life just about. It was that long ago. Yeah, it was about, what, like, oh. 10, 11 years ago. Oh, a bit longer than that now. I reckon we're getting a bit long in the tooth. But yeah. Herbs was my manager while working Working at Red Rooster. <laughs> so Believe it or not. On, just for anyone playing at home, Red Rooster is and was back in H Town, a popular chicken franchise that uh, maybe our listeners over the seas might not know about. And just to give you an idea of the level of quality you can expect, they put J Cell Herbert as <laughs> <in> the manager. <laughs> Let that sink in for a I moment. I don't know whether to be offended by that or take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, what's, what's complimentary about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, considering the fact that I worked as a chef and all that for 10 plus years, is that a high oh. level of expectancy? You, or, oh. or are we talking oh. sort of like gutter slime, <laughs> trash, <laughs> disgusting... <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> members, members of the underground community and you who have jumped on board, this is the first time, mark this day in your calendar, where Herbs has named off that, I have a chef, remember? <laughs> <laughs> and you- it's also the last time too. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure he does like to throw it around quite regularly. Fitz, I'm going to jump into this real quick because I did have this as a bit of a note here. We were talking about last week how different we are, but the same at the same time. One thing that's majorly different between Herbs and Nims... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ...is the shower intake. <laughs> And the, the, the reason I bring this up is because he's talking about handling food. Oh, yeah, it's true, that. <laughs> and one of our ongoing jokes is the man doesn't shower. Whereas yeah. Nims, on the other hand, takes like 15 a day. Yeah, between Jay and I, we sort of roughly average out the showers of an average man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do your bit for the environment, yeah? Well, all, all that thing. Yeah, got to uh, save water. Well, the thing is, <laughs> Nims pristine glass box that's uh, in his bathroom located next to the sink. I'm not sure what you call all of those things. What is that? Um, and me, who basically, uh, next to the creature in the shape of water, is, is someone who uh, is moist most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ladies. 
I, I, I think Jay and I sort of balance it out, sort of out there, because you're right, Nitty. I remember that time. Because Ned sort of found this out because I remember I'd go to the gym during work, then I'd have a shower, then he's like, oh, what took you so long? I'm like, oh, yeah, then I went home and had a shower again. Yeah, that's what it's like. Nims would have a shower to prep for the gym, <laughs> have a shower after the gym, then go home and have a shower like like 15 a day. And Herbs, well, wow. as he just pointed out, he, he likes to save water. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I've never seen a man that's more scared of water than a <laughs> <in> LA. <laughs> you know how, like, you occasionally you'll get those spray bowls of water and spray, like, a kitten or something to, you know, tell them to behave? Yeah. So you're like, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Start I like, I like Nims how you mentioned the Shape of Water not? movie. Maybe we need to do a sequel with Herbs and it's like avoiding the water. That is that is too funny. Of the West, that mountain. <laughs> there, he's on fire. This he's morning. on fire. What man. What's in coffee? that coffee? <laughs> Last week he was so grumpy, and I thought it was worth a thing. We did bring up his love for junk TV, though, Nims, and Married at First Sight. I've got to hear this. Hey, yeah. Everyone's allowed to have a guilty pleasure. Oh, he could have picked a better one. <laughs> like do oh, needing oh, himself. Well, I know Ned likes watching Twilight, so <laughs> yeah. we go. <laughs> That's another story for another time. The shot's fired. <laughs> right, indeed, my friend. Hey, but look, while we're talking movies, can we quickly mention that the Marvel trailer for Infinity War has just dropped? I saw it shared oh, on yes. the Astronomicon Facebook page. Yeah. And it looks the goods. If you want to, like, let's think about it. We have got, when, when did uh, Iron Man come out? 2007. You know that because that's the only dated Marvel movie because there's a MySpace joke in there. <laughs> <laughs> And the fact that we've finally got to this moment, it just looks like good. And I, if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend you jump onto Facebook or wherever you consume your trailers and check out the new one for Infinity War. When's yeah. it drop, Jay? Jay's uh, he's really April 27th. Up. April 27th. It drops. And I, I'll tell you this. I don't think I've ever been more hyped for this Avengers movie until I saw that new trailer this morning. Looks very good. It, does look it very is good. the goods. Wait, you mean you did stuff before you came here? Yes, I did stuff oh, before what? I came <laughs> here. Isn't that a shocker? Oh, that, 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 that condescending joke. Well, of course. <laughs> what is this fiction? <laughs> None of that. Classic JLH oh, right cool, there. Though. The reason I brought up before we did jump into that trailer there, the maths thing, Jay, is I found it very interesting that you did take time out to tag Nims and I, which I do put down to yeah. April, your lovely girl. I'm sure it was her that suggested to do this. You tagged Nims and I in a maths, like what was it? A, someone's breaking up or getting back together? No, I just sort of did that just to um, take the p- so to speak. Right. I doubt that very much. You were very much looping the sand to like, well, I enjoy this. Uh, check this out, boys. <laughs> it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip these guys a little bit. He's just like that. He's one of those yeah, jovial yeah. sort of guys. You did manage to do that, but you did not once advertise the new show. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, your lovely partner did do. So, uh, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> like, explain that one. It's a 50 um, 50 split there. But, I got nothing. Uh, hey, Nettie, we should talk about something else before we get too sidetracked and or Jay stabs one of us in the eyes. Yeah, that's true. With a fork, no doubt. Or, while that coffee's still hot, make sure it doesn't end up all over your face, Nettie. Because you Empty know one cup. day he's going to snap. <laughs> but, um, oh, we know that. <laughs> quickly talk about game one of the NBL finals that just happened. Uh, 24 hours ago. Well, this is the reason, one of the big reasons I brought Johnny Van Fitzenberry in, because this guy knows basketball. And before we jump into this, I want to I go through our predictions for the series. John actually, <laughs> I forgot, and we were talking during the first quarter, and I'm like, quick, give me your prediction, because he could have been whatever. <laughs> Jay has gone Melbourne United 3-2. Nim has gone Melbourne United 3-2. I've gone Melbourne United 3-1 and Fitz 3-1, Brody 3-2. And actually, first off, Jay said, what final? <laughs> <laughs> when I said it out, he's like, right. what final? <laughs> what well, final I, I just like a little bit of specifics. What Melbourne other United. final is going on at the moment, Jay, I don't know. There could sport? be... Uh... Rocket tennis <laughs> super shots final. Well, how do you, how do you reckon the final that will it, work? It's, it's final season in every, nearly every sport at the minute. Which it's, other one? I think the NBL's coming up to it. Uh, <laughs> NBA, yes. sorry, is coming up to its finals. The same with, I don't know, uh, EPL still in the or... Look at it, the brain's ticking, ticking. Table, super table <laughs> tennis. I don't know. I don't keep up to Great date save. with a lot of sports as much Great as save. you two guys do. 
No, I just thought the fact that we were talking about it last week might have been a dead giveaway. And the mere fact too that actually one of a proud export from our home sound is playing in a predominant role for the Adelaide 36ers, but hey, he's like rocket tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Shout out to Mitch Creek too. <laughs> Almost definitely. He's an avid listener, I heard. I'm, yeah. I'm sure he would be. I actually reckon he'd be cool enough to jump on this if we asked him. Now, jumping into it, Jay, you said 3-2. Yeah. Let us know why and how and... Most importantly, how did you work out that it was basketball, <laughs> not rocket tennis? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think after about the 15th cup of coffee, it eventually dropped. But um, coffee. Blame the yeah. coffee. Ah, Java. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> 3-2 just seemed like it was going to be the most yeah, logical sort of thing because especially the way that oh, Melbourne had been the five series. Throughout, the, <laughs> throughout the whole season, building up to the final series, as we were saying last week, Nimi, it was very sort of inconsistent. They've just sort of started on that downslide and then all of a sudden they've just come up out of nowhere. Johnny and Ned, I don't know about you, but I know that he looked at me just then. <laughs> <laughs> did, he did. <laughs> He is a Melbourne United fan. That's the reason I genuinely ask him this, because Herbs and I have had many fights over the years over National Basketball League, because I was a Dragons fan. You were all, Before you were, that, a Magic fan. And before that was uh, Titans. No thinking here. You were a Titans He's, fan as well <laughs> yeah. when they were around. He's always been Tiger, so we've always battled, but now we are united, and John's jumped yeah. on board as well. <laughs> the odd man out here is you, Nim. So I actually do ask him this genuinely, but, you know, he was he had date night last night, so... Yeah. That's very rough. Yeah, it was mass reruns. <laughs> All right, that's good, Jay. So you've said... I'm not really sure what you said. I'm, just, <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm not even sure what I said either now. I'm right now that uh, last night wasn't game one in the Herbert household. It was, in fact, 376 Gimmick Street. Rocket tennis. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Melbourne took the game 107 to 96. Chris Golding, she is he an absolute superstar? 26 points, I think uh, he put down. He really lit yeah. up. It was a very scary point in that game, yeah. though. I think it was at the first quarter, Johnny, when right after you've given your prediction of. Well, you went with me with 3-1. Yeah. Big old Matty Hodgson lands, <laughs> lands on top on of Casper. Casper Ware, and it's like, well, oh, wait, I change that? I change that. Because if Casper Ware went out of that series, it would be a whole different ball game mm. because he really is an absolute game changer. But you're right, Golding really lit up and, and brought it, man. Like, he was on fire last night, and they didn't have too much of an answer for him. But sorry to uh, cut you off there, Nim. Oh, no, when I said to you that this would be a 3-2 series and hopefully going Melbourne's way, it's because, as Jay so eloquently put it, Oh, well, you, uh, yeah, uh, 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 finals, uh, uh, but I think what he meant to say was, you know, after the FIBA World Cup qualifying break, it was clearly Adelaide and Melbourne that were really in it. I mean, you just look at it. Yes, Melbourne did get the minor premiership, but you look at the percentage, I think it was literally 0.9 or something, because both teams were literally... There was not much separating him. The strange anomaly was that they actually hadn't played each other for quite a while. Yeah, their series ended really early on in mm. the season, and Melbourne wiped them. I think it was three it zip. Was. And going in, you'd think, wow, it's going to be all Melbourne, but Adelaide have really lifted their game since then. And mm. there is a game on tomorrow. By the time this podcast drops, I'm not sure it probably will have already been out. Mm. I think Adelaide will win game two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is why I said it was. Uh, bust out to a 3-2 sort of series uh, because they'll be playing in Adelaide and you know that the superstars your Mitch Creeks and Matty Hodgson's and stuff like that will come back they will be juiced up ready to go I- I'm really looking forward to it yeah and it sort of makes me think I don't know when Melbourne's going to beat them on the road for my 3-1 prediction Johnny thinks in game 4 mm. so it could be that 3-2 when I really think it out a bit more yeah that's oh. uh, I was just going to say that's just the way that the draw is really they win their games at home but you, you mm. You got to win one on the road, you know, and that's that's yeah. what the pressure is, especially for Adelaide having only two games at home. Oh, most definitely, and like mm. and like you said before, too, Nim, like Melbourne swept Adelaide, yep. a lot more pressure on their shoulders too. Yeah, they got to go in there and and get the job done. It'd be nice to see them sweep them, wouldn't it, Jay? Mm. Oh, that'd be awesome to see it happen.
Mm. Have you ever swept in your actual house, Jay? Yes, I have. <laughs> not, that, not that kind of sweeping. <laughs> oh, we're not talking uh, sweeping the floors with brooms and that? Oh, okay, maybe it doesn't. Uh, does your client have anything to say, sir? No, you're on it. <laughs> <laughs> that plays the fifth. Uh, but I reckon that the next game, tomorrow night's game, is going to be the key. It's just going to be seeing how they come out. Are they going to change their structure? And what are they going to do? Because Adelaide, like you said, Adelaide's down one game. They still need to win it at home. Yeah. Um, it's not an automatic victory. So hmm. it, Exactly. They lose tomorrow. This series is over. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much done. I'm very much looking forward to it. Jay, I think you're working tomorrow, 3 p.m.? Yeah, I'm working tomorrow, so I won't be uh, watching the game. You can just chuck it on at work, can't you? We don't have Foxtel. Susan oh. is watching <laughs> his employee, Susan. That's when she watches Downtown Abbey, Joe. Oh, Come on. Yeah. Fan, okay, I'm with you. And yep. I thought, isn't it on Viceland? I'm pretty sure it's on Viceland that game tomorrow night. I might be wrong. I don't, I've got Not no sure. idea. I don't know. I'll be dragging Fitzy over to watch it on Foxtel. So uh, looking forward to it anyway, and we will change things up. So we're, we're sticking with that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, nice. Well, we're going to jump into some wrestling stuff right now. This may not be so much Johnny's. For Tabe and Nims WrestleMania is shaping up well. Jay, bit of WrestleMania went down last night did it brother? <laughs> <laughs> I, I placed the fifth. Uh, no. Yeah, there was too, too much of uh, Married at Third Side going on. But yes, the WrestleMania card is slowly ticking along. I'll refrain from uh, talking about the big thing because uh, now I believe you're still watching Fastlane. But uh, we'll talk about the Raw side a little bit because Elimination Chamber did wrap up. One of the big matches that we will be seeing is... Brock Lesnar taking on Roman Reigns. Now, we have seen this match before, and it was an absolute ball terror back at WrestleMania 31. Do you remember that was when Seth Rollins went and cashed in? Do you remember being there, watching that live, Nettie? Oh, most definitely, man. And hopefully, hopefully it's Roman Reigns. I don't know, Jay's looking at me like, oh, I love Roman. <laughs> he, he may be one of the only, like, you know, I hate to jump on with all the smart marks or whatever that you call them these days that, you know, hate on Roman, but I, I really want him to lose. <laughs> It'll be very, very interesting to see what happens, I can tell you that. But uh, something else that's pretty cool, uh, Nitty, on the Raw side as well, Broken Matt Hardy, someone who was a big, big star and a big player in the latter days of his career in TNA slash Impact Wrestling, he is currently locked in a huge feud with Bray Wyatt. And they are going to be having, do you remember on Impact they had the final deletion? Yes. Oh, well, do I what? That was one of the greatest <laughs> matches of all time where Matt Hardy had his drone and whatnot. That's it. Good news, everyone. For all those fans, Vanguard won. Senor Benjamin and House Hardy is back. We've got wow. the ultimate deletion that will be on Monday Night Raw, and it's going to be bloody awesome. That is so awesome right there, John. I need to sort of <laughs> share this with you, man. This is this is all sorts of crazy. And it's great to see WWE really cashing in on that TNA storyline, isn't it? Like, no one would have seen it back in the day. But that, honestly, our wrestling crew of nerds, and, of course, the elite athlete himself, Jay, <laughs> is all over that match. He's one of the greatest ones ever. Somehow his kid's involved in it. They've got a drone involved in wow. it. And Jeff Hardy changes. What? It's just bizarre. But so... So that's happening again, Nim. Yep, exactly. It'll be Thoreau Wyatt versus Matt Hardy in the ultimate deletion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, man. And on the, the subject of Matt Hardy, you chatted with him, and last night I listened to your chat with Elias. Very cool, man. You are just knocking those out left, right, and center. Thank you, good sir. Thank you, good sir. It was a bit of a quick, brief chat with Elias, because I don't know, like, this funnily enough, but I'm happy to admit this. Elias is a pretty new cat onto the scene. He has been wrestling a fair bit beforehand, but I didn't really know too much about the guy. I just know that we saw him, he got booed in Melbourne back at NXT, and he's an absolute star on Monday Night Raw at the moment. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Oh, for sure, and I love that you brought that up with him as well, and then he said that you're the only smart person in Australia. There you go, Jay. (laughs) Jay just doesn't know what he's just wanted to say. He looks away. Oh, Oh, yeah. He's an idiot. What are you talking about, (laughs) Elias? They want me to talk. Moving on. I do not walk with Elias, idiots. (laughs) None of that. (laughs) Do we have any more on the wrestling front without giving away too many spoilers, Nim, or are we going to jump into Jay's weird winking emojis? (laughs) And the Oakland Raiders. So basically, we want to talk about this stuff because it doesn't really come across too well in text. So I know that he's got the best of intentions, but I don't like sometimes like when you see the emoji use, uh, <laughs> which is essentially, it, it can be kind of scary because 
We're, we're used to maybe getting like a thumbs up or things like that, but when you get the little winky faces and uh, <laughs> the huge laughing and crying ones, that's the odd one because you can just picture our boy Bird there going, mm, emoji. I received a wink one saying, Jay, because we are recording this very early on a Saturday morning. I'm like, Jay, I meant 8 a.m., not p.m. Yeah, I knew knew what you meant, so I thought I'd throw that in as like a little little wink face. Wink. Jay, I knew what you were talking about. I'm not that much of a bloody drunk donkey. (laughs) You didn't want to swear there. I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) That's a whole bucket, little bit. But it does put you off because, let's face it, Jay in real life is very intimidating, very threatening. He's a big hulking brute. It's like he's an elite athlete as he comes in. He's on the start of the Taylor's Lakes Footy Club. In fact, I strongly recommend someone does jump onto a uh, nice footy and have a look at his impressive stats for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, zero, 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 zero. How's your preseason going, Hurts? Well, I don't good? know if you guys have played. Um, yeah, preseason's going all right. Yeah? Can't Being you tell, man? Oh, I'm um, just... I just going to say, look at the guy. He's a fine <laughs> specimen. Full forward. What we need to remember too is like, like Jay is battling back from injury, but you can rebuild the machine. We are really amped up and looking forward to the day when you kick your first sausage roll and don't eat. <laughs> That's most definitely right there. You can rebuild the machine and, and you do put a lot of it down to DDP yoga, don't you, Jay? Like, I do put reason. a lot of it down to DDP yoga, yeah. That's the reason that you're in such fine sort of <laughs> yeah. physical prowess now, I guess. I'm at the uh, best physique I think I've been in 15 years. <laughs> the, the, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, there's the emotion right there. Jay is looking forward to a very big year. And, Johnny, real quickly, man, off the subject of Jay winking at us, we weren't sure whether that was like a, hey, baby, April, come on over, or a, you're going to die very yeah, soon. Yeah, very wink. similar, yeah. Which you're wrong on both fronts. It was just sort of like a little sort of ribbing. <laughs> right, of course. Makes perfect sense now. Yeah. Uh, you filled in all the gaps, Herbs. Now, now I'm good. <laughs> Let us know about these Oakland Raiders, guys. We've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, I was going to say, just to finish off on a topic that Herb, Herb's loves. I mean, look at the Oakland Raiders. The last 24 hours have signed Jordy Nelson. They've signed yeah. Doug Martin. You must be getting pretty excited, big fella. I'm really looking forward to see how they're going to go with this whole new offensive and defensive line. And the fact that also Jack Del Rio is gone as head coach as well. So I think they've got big things coming up. If they hang on to Michael Crabtree, they're going to they're gonna go a long way. But oh. I reckon they've got to cut someone for money, and it's either him or Marshawn. Who would you cut? I I'd, I'd say Marshawn. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Oh, there you go. A bit yep. of a controversy. I think they got to get rid of him, free up that I cap think space. He's been ejected twice in consecutive weeks during the regular NFL season. He's hasn't really done much as an offensive lineman, really, at all. He's an old, old man. He's hey, an old man. Let's not disrespect old men right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are, you are, sir. You youthful good looks, Jay Fitz. That's yeah, exactly um, right. I don't know about you, Nims, but did you? I'm sure I just felt like Fitzy did when we were talking wrestling. I had no idea what they were talking about, but Jay really lit up like a Christmas tree. I could imagine that because, like, just to actually hear him just dice around his words going, and, uh, twice. <laughs> one of my favorite things there. My knowledge of NFL basically extends to the Super Bowl and the Minnesota Vikings. So, really it. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And, Jay, can we get one Raiders baby, please? No. Come on. What about it? Get to me on. Get to me on. Hang on. I'll have, to, I'll have to go back a bit. Hang on. Don't want to get those levels distorted. Oh, here we go. Come on, baby, get some yards! <laughs> How's that? I don't sound like you when I do the J voice. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one Raiders, baby. Come on, man. Raiders, baby! <laughs> Can you chop that up for my new ringtone? <laughs> That'll be the number one ringtone on our tunes now. <laughs> Oh, you needed to see that. Why can't this be TV? It has to be radio. I'm was glad just, it isn't TV. That was just <laughs> so the listeners. <laughs> All right, guys, we're getting to that time of the show. Jared from Head PE is up next. They're heading out this week. We've got a couple of shows coming up, as Nims pointed out last week. Wednesday the 13th is heading our way in <laughs> April. And I said we were going to talk more about this, but, well, we're we've sort run of out of time, out of time yet again. again. POD heading our way in April as well. Seether, they're out here in May. When's Machine Head out, Jay? Uh, Machine Head is... Is in July. There we go. He had to think about that a little bit more than his Raiders stuff right there. Nim, anything yep. you would like to end on there, friends? Uh, no, not really. I'm just trying to think of how I can butcher Head P.E.'s name uh, during, during my hashtags this time around, but I don't think I can. 
Yeah, right. Well, and <laughs> big shout outs to our graphics guy, Shane Craft, who sent through the graphics for this one, calling it Ned PE, which oh. I thought was quite clever. <laughs> that was yeah, really yeah. clever. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Um, well done, McMuff. Yeah, McMuff. Got to give massive shout outs to him because he has schooled it once again on the graphics, and sometimes I forget, but big, big props to him. Really quickly before we go, Herbs, you're a massive Supernatural fan. I am as well. There is a Scooby Doo Supernatural crossover coming up. We've got two minutes. Sum it up. Basically, what's going to happen is Sam and Dean pretty much get transported into Scooby Doo world. Yeah, it's into the cartoon. Yeah, I was cool, actually thinking cool. it was going to go the other way around, but yeah. <laughs> this is going to be all sorts of fun. So look out for that March 29, did you? Yeah, say? March 29. All right, thank you, fellas. We're going to talk some music next week, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but stick around. Jared from Head PE is up next. Yo, what up? This is Sam Dog with Cypress Hill and Power Flow, and you're listening to the end of that. Head P are heading our way this week, and we are lucky enough to have Jared on the line. Jared, how are you, man? I'm doing dead, bro. Oh, that's great to hear, man. And it's also great to see Head PE on the Storm the Gates Festival in New Zealand. You guys playing along this, the likes of Suicidal Tendencies, Limp Biscuit, Sublime. What does that mean to you, man? <laughs> I think it's cool. There must be some mistake. No, I'm just kidding. I think it's an honor for Head PE to play with all those famous bands. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, not just famous, but prestigious names, you know? So we're stoked to be on the, to be on the same stage and get to rock out, you know? Yeah, I- I'm just shattered that it's not heading our way, man. I know, well... It's a crazy, small world where my drummer, Trauma, two years ago when we were playing with Snot in Australia, we had a layover in New Zealand and Trauma broke down with this guy named Kane. And uh, two years, you know, and then who was a head GE fan. And then two years later, it's actually this guy, Kane, who put us on this show with Suicidal and all that. So it's cool. Oh, that is crazy right there. And I was actually at that snot tour as well, man. And that that was a fantastic one as well. That was a fun one, yes. Yeah, definitely, man. And that sort of wanted me to get onto the side of things. Head PE are still more than going strong to this day. What do you think the secret to staying relevant is in 2018, Jared, especially being an independent group? (laughs) You're the secret. Well, you know what, dude? Part of it just lies in, like, my spirit. The spirit that I have embraced of like just never being done you know so for sure i'm just loving music and creating music and performing music and loving the lifestyle you know that comes along with making a living at creating music and and doing shows so i'm following my passion at the same time i'm lucky that there are people all over the planet that kind of identify with with the musical vibe that I'm into and with the the lyrics and and the message of perseverance and never giving up that I'm constantly putting out through the music. So you know what I mean? It's a give and take. It's like I'm giving uh, music and a message and that people are are giving back their support because, you know, it's a two-way street, so I'm blessed in that way. Yeah, most definitely, man. And I guess on the topic of your music and, and your style and not slowing down, you probably have the most unique style, the rap, the punk, the hip-hop, the metal, the reggae even all mashed up into one. Do you sort of have a preferred genre, Jared? Well, I can't say that I do, you know, because it's different. It depends what you ask me. Like, if you're asking me what's my preferred music to play on stage, then I'm going to say, you know what, I love doing different styles on stage because it takes me through different feelings and different vibrations. So when I'm doing a show, I love to hit that heavy metal grindcore thrashiness, but I also like to hit that blast beat punk rock vibe. I also want to touch on a hip hop vibe. Mm. And I also want to touch on a reggae vibe. So it's, it's like this four headed dragon for me where I want to feel punk rock. I want to feel that thrash metal. I want to feel reggae and I want to feel hip hop. So it's, those are the four major food groups that I'm fucking with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it definitely is a unique style, and you, just hearing you talk about that, Jared, has me hyped up to hear some some of that new head PE. It's been a couple of years since forever. Are, are you guys working on a new one yet? 
Yeah, so like Forever was built on a foundation of calypso and dancehall rhythm, right? Like if you go back and listen to that song, every single track is based on a foundation of calypso dancehall rhythm. Now, the next record is going to be based on trap music, Ooh. you know, um, kind of trap music, EDM type style, you know, but that we're gonna, I'm going to use that to fuse with the other styles. I'm intrigued, man. And you guys have already started on this? Well, we've already started... We've already started the experimenting process, so now we're trying to have this record finished and out to the public before the end of the year. Oh, yeah, that is what we like to hear there. So yeah, looking at the end, of, <laughs> that, that's awesome, man. You've just got to get off the road first. Yeah, that's see. Here's the thing. Let's be honest, right? It's like I'm very blessed. You know, I can provide my family with a middle, nice middle class living. But because, you know, we're kind of in that club scene, it just takes a lot of shows. I have to stack up a lot of shows to, to keep this middle class lifestyle going. So, you know, you're right. It, it, it's important for me to block out space to create, you know. Mm. But during those months when I'm creating, that means money's not coming in. So it's kind of a juggling act, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm ready for it. Uh, most definitely, man. Well, well, that's good to hear. And sort of changing things up, Jared, you're well and truly known for the truth movement, social justice, New World Order, and all that kind of thing. I want to know, though, Jared, is there something that may catch us off guard to know about you, like something that listeners would be surprised to hear about you? Well, I mean, if working off of what you just said, it's like people might be surprised that even though I might preach about, you know, social awareness and this and that about this, the Babylon system, System. I myself am uh, firmly, you know, planted into the system, you know, trying to figure out how to navigate and produce abundance and success within this Babylon system, right? So people would might be surprised to know that, hey, you know, uh, my son goes to public school, you know, um, yeah. and I'm, 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 you know, I've got three mortgages that I'm trying to pay, right? <laughs> so it's, it's not that I'm like out in some shack in the middle of the woods living off the grid and making my own soap and I'm all this, <laughs> right? You know, I'm like in the middle of the system like everybody else, but trying to figure out, you know, how to decode it. Oh, there you go, man. Yeah, I didn't picture you out in the middle of the woods, but I definitely hear what you're saying. <laughs> Not that I'm, like, feeding my son Happy Meals every day either, right? Yes. You can't be doing that. <laughs> no, no. All right, man. Well, on that sort of topic, can you give us a good recommendation, Jared? Something cool for, for listeners to check out, something that you'd recommend. Oh, uh, you know what, dude? I listen to Frank Sinatra. You know, it makes me feel like a boss, like when I want to count money or when <laughs> I want to feel like, you know. Frank Sinatra is just some good music for, like, you know, uh, trying to feel like you're the captain of your own reality, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this music that's kind of, like, unpretentious and not that rebellious, really, you know? Just kind of like... Like how I was just talking about trying to decode the Babylon system. Like, you know, it's like you listen to Frank Sinatra, it's, it's all about that, trying to, like, master this reality, you know, the way he was doing it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, you know, what else? What else? You know, dude, I've just been listening to this kind of trap music, this underground hip-hop that's not so underground anymore. Like, this guy, like, I, I really like these kids, like, Young Thug and Gunna and, uh, you know, Kevin Gates and shit like that. That's what I've been listening to. Uh, that's cool. And, and throwing back to the Frank Sinatra thing, I can really see you there smoking on a cigar, counting your money, <laughs> listening to Frank. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like a boss. Smoke a cigar, drink some red wine, you know. <laughs> and that brings it me on to... good. It feels good. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, man. That brings me on to my next topic, Jared. If you weren't doing music as a career, what do you think you would have been doing? 
Well, you know what? I got to tell you, it would have been a fantasy of mine to become a lawyer, you know? Wow. To become a lawyer, and then maybe after that, to become maybe a college professor. Like, in some kind of fantasy world of mine, if I'm not Jared from Head PE, I'm a lawyer or a professor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's awesome there, and something we didn't know about you as well, throwing back to what we were talking about before. And now, finally... Yeah. Jared, I know you're a big MMA fighter. What do you think about the ideas of uh, Floyd Mayweather jumping into the octagon to <laughs> to face Connor? I think it's silly. I'm a huge Floyd. I'm a Mayweather fan, hardcore. So, you know, I think it's just, he, it's too late and he's too old to be learning wrestling and jiu-jitsu uh, at this point of his career. He's like one of the greatest boxers that have ever been live so that him stepping into mma to me is silly now i think it's silly because wrestling and jujitsu are not one of the disciplines that are utilized in boxing so it's not so silly for connor to go box because boxing is one of the disciplines of mm. mixed martial arts the same way it's not silly for a mixed martial arts guy to go to jujitsu because BJJ is one of the disciplines of MMA, but it doesn't work in reverse when you're doing, you know, just jujitsu. You wouldn't just go fly into the octagon when you don't know how to strike, you know, so mm. it doesn't it doesn't work both ways. No, I couldn't agree with you anymore on that one. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. <laughs> I'm not interested. I mean, I would buy any fight that Floyd Mayweather's in, whether it's boxing or MMA, but if it's MMA, he's going to get taken down and beat up. <laughs> well, there you have it. I love it. I love being shut down. <laughs> You're like, I'm not interested. Uh, that's too funny. All right, well, thank I'd buy it, though. I would buy it. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, definitely appreciate you taking some time out, Jared, and very much looking yeah, forward sorry. to you heading our way this week, playing at the Woolly Mammoth in Brisbane on Wednesday, The Prince in Melbourne on Thursday, Fowler's Live in Adelaide on Friday, and wrapping things up in Saturday at the Manning Bar in Sydney. Hit up silverbacktouring.com.au for your tickets and facebook.com slash headpe to keep up to date with Jared and Head PE. Thanks again for taking some time out, Jared. Yeah, buddy. Good to hear from you. See you guys in a little bit. Raiders, baby!